All right, you guys, uh, this line is on perpendicular lines. It's our second lesson for Integrated Math 3. Don't forget, all of your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. So here we go. So perpendicular lines. Now, perpendicular, uh, you probably have seen this before, um, is an upside down capital T. Okay, and this is another repeat of an IM2 lesson. I forgot which module it was in. So what, what are the key ideas about perpendicular bisectors of a segment? Okay, so we're going to construct uh, the perpendicular bisector of a line segment. Okay, so here we go. We're going to pick up a, a compass here, and we're going to uh, place the point of the compass at point A. Let's go ahead and get our compass here. Okay, so, here's, so we're going to place it at point A, the pointy part right there. Alrighty, and then um, uh, using a compass setting that's greater than half the length of the segment AB. So, so I'm guessing there's the, the midpoint right there. We're going to uh, make sure it's open more than half, and it is right there. Okay, we're going to draw an arc on the top and on the bottom. Okay, so just an arc. So I'll do it right there, and then the same arc uh, with the same compass opening it has to be the exact same right there. Okay, so there it is right there. Okay, so uh, our next step is without adjusting the compass, we're going to place the point on B. So with the same compass opening, slide that over there and we're going to put the point on B and do the exact same thing. So we're going to uh, make an arc right here and then um, uh, up right here. Okay, so um, there we go. And then uh, we're going to use um, uh, these arcs right here. Let me go ahead and get rid of that right here. Uh, okay, now we're going to connect this guy with this guy using a straight edge right there, okay? So using a straight edge, we're going to draw segment uh, CD, okay? Or even line CD. So just connect um, right straight through C and D using a straight edge right there. And then what happens, you guys, is it makes a nice right angle right there. That's the perpendicular part. Right angles are uh, uh, perpendicular. And it makes this side congruent to this side. So it means it bisects it. So it's a perpendicular bisector right there. Okay. All right. So uh, now we're going to construct a line uh, that passes through some point P that is not on line L. Okay, so here's a point P not on this line right here that's perpendicular to this line. Okay, so we're going to need to uh, place the point of the compass on point P. So let me grab the compass again and um, uh, draw an arc that intersects the line uh, at two points. Okay, so it's going to intersect this line at two points. Let me put that right about there. And then we're going to slide it down. Yeah, that's pretty good right there. So we're going to cons uh, arc it through right through there. Okay. So now what we've done is we're focusing on these two guys right here. Okay. Where they intersected the two points right there. And we're going to call them points A and B right there. Okay. Then the next thing is, let me get this out of the way. So from points A and B, make the same size arc. Okay. It doesn't have to be the same as this arc right here, but when we make an arc from point A, it has to be the same as this arc from point uh, B. Okay, and then uh, below the line, so we're going to do that down here. You can, in general, most of the time you can use the same compass opening. Okay, well, my air conditioner is going on. I'm at the end of July, so it's really hot. Okay, so right there, and then the same compass opening goes over here. So we call it our airplane because it's really loud. So um, anyway, so we're going to connect those, and then let me close that out. I don't think I need that anymore. Okay, so now we're looking at this point. We're going to connect this point up through P right there, and um, uh, we're going to call it point C down there and use a straight edge to construct segment PC. Okay, so there's segment PC. Okay, now this is not necessarily the midpoint because it's a whole line. Lines can't be bisected, only segments can be bisected. But I do know we've made a right angle, so it's going to be perpendicular right there. So PC is perpendicular to line L. Okay, so it's not a midpoint because, because it's a line. Okay, all right, so. Perpendicular bisector theorem says if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, remember the perpendicular of a bisector goes through the midpoint of a segment 
and it makes right angles, then it's equidistant from those endpoints. And you're thinking, what does that mean? So here we have line L, okay, and it is being perpendicular, right angle, and it's bisecting, so it's on the perpendicular bisector right here, okay? Notice this line right here is not a perpendicular bisector, okay? It, it, it bisects it, but it's not perpendicular, okay? See how that is not perpendicular? Notice this line right here. It's perpendicular to uh, segment AB, but it doesn't bisect it, okay? So perpendicular bisector means right angle going through the midpoint right there, okay? So, so anyways, line L is a perpendicular bisector of AB, and so what this says is if I can pick any point on L, let's pick um, uh, this point right here okay this point right here if it's on the perpendicular bisector which is line L then it's gonna say that this segment going to this endpoint of the line segment is congruent to this segment right here okay so any point that's on this perpendicular bisector is equidistant so the point P is equidistant to A and B okay um, uh, point R is also equidistant to A and B. Any point that's on this perpendicular bisector is also going to be the same distance to the endpoints of the segment right there, okay? Point S is equidistant, okay? And so on, okay? So the converse of the perpendicular bisector is also true, and it just says if a point is equidistant from the endpoints on the segment, then it has to be on the perpendicular bisector. So if if um, uh, AR is con congruent to BR, then R has to be on that perpendicular bisector right there, okay? All right, so if two uh, intersecting lines form a linear pair, remember linear pairs means line and the pair means two. So if two intersector lines form a linear pair that are equal to each other, uh, then the lines have to be perpendicular. So if uh, angle one is congruent to angle two, because um, they make a linear pair, these guys make this linear pair, they make line M right there. So if these two angles are congruent, then it has to be, they have to be both 90s right there. So that means that they're perpendicular, okay? That's what that theorem says. Okay, the easy proof is on the bottom of page uh, 968. I don't think it's 968, you guys. That's an integrated math two. It's on uh, page like 13 or something, I forgot. We'll figure it out in just a second. So the converse of this is also true. If two intersecting lines are perpendicular, then they form equal linear pair angles. All right, there's a lot there. Okay, so given that um, uh, this line is parallel to this line, and given that this line C is parallel to this line right here, and that's 50 degrees, and that's 90 degrees, find the measures of each. Okay, let's put in the parallels and the 50 and 90 right there. Okay, I, I forgot how I did this. Okay, vertical angles are congruent, so if that's 90, then that's 90 right there. And if that's uh, 50 right there, then that's 50 right there, okay? So what else did I do? It just depends on the orders. Okay, so uh, angle two. Angle two is 50 because uh, it's corresponding with angle one. So if I slid, remember corresponding angles are if we slid this straight down, it would slide right down there. Okay, and uh, two and three are vertical angles, so that's easy right there. And seven, seven is a vertical angle with angle five, so that's easy right there. Okay, and then what else did I do? And then straight lines make 180, so let's focus on this straight line right here, 180. So if that's 50 and that's 90, this has to be 40 right there. And same with 6 right there. So 4 and 6 are both 40s, okay? And uh, what did I do? Uh, I'm sorry, did I say 4 and 6? 8 and 6 are both 40s right there, okay? So uh, where's 4? Four? 4's over here. 4 forms a vertical angle. So I know that that's um, uh, also 40 right there, okay? So I think that's everything right there. All right, so there's, if you're in my class, that's going to be your assignment right there. Let's do number 18 together. I'm still going to require that you write this down. Now, if you're in my class, I want you to write the picture 
I want you to write the given statements. I want you to write the proof statements. I want you to write a column for statements and reasons. Okay. All right. So here's some easy points. Let's put these givens down and this proof down. So the givens go right here and the proof goes right here. And sometimes they want us to float the given in a different place. So I will right there. Okay. So given that um, uh, this line is parallel to this line and we want to prove since um, uh, uh, it's perpendicular right here. We want to prove that uh, it's perpendicular right there. Okay, and what we're going to do is uh, show that uh, we got corresponding angles are equal. So angle RTD is congruent to angle RVB because these blue guys right here, they're called corresponding angles. And if the lines are parallel, corresponding angles, um, uh, uh, if they're congruent, uh, corresponding angles theorem. So if lines are parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. So now if that's a right angle, that's going to be a right angle right there. So what we're going to do is say the measure of angle R uh, T D is equal to 90. So uh, because perpendicular lines form right angles right there, or definition of perpendicular lines, and then angle uh, RVB is also equal to 90 because R T D equals R V B. And so what we did is we substituted this 90 in right there. So that's what, um, I'm sorry, right here. So it's a substitution property right there. So we substituted in 90. And now that we have a 90 right there, then this must be uh, that um, uh, this line is perpendicular to this line right there by uh, uh, definition of perpendicular lines. Okay. All right. So um, uh, your assignment is still the same. I still want you to do number 18. So just make sure that you include the proof on your homework with the pictures and the given and the proof statement. All right. You guys take care.